Hi, this is George coming to you from Nautilus Mission Control at the Inner Space Center in Rhode Island. And we've got with us today lead mechanical engineer and one of the creators of Hercules, Todd Gregory. Todd is going to walk us through a launch, a typical launch of Hercules and Argus. So what's the first step, Todd? For a launch sequence, we actually start with a uh, quite a long list of things that we need to do before we're ready to actually physically launch the vehicles. The first thing is a pre-dive. It's a long list of items that we need to check out on the ROVs. All of the electrical systems, all of the mechanical systems, all of the hydraulic functions, everything gets checked out very carefully by the team of pilots and technicians. At the same time, the navigator is working with the bridge, the, the ship drivers, to put the ship in what's called dynamic positioning and get it over the launch site exactly so that the ship is ready. And uh, choreographing that whole maneuver is our deck chief, um, his name is Mark DeRoche. We're going to see him on this uh, video in just a minute. Uh, at the same time as Mark is, is operating the deck, here's Mark DeRoche. He's been with, uh, I, uh, with this organization for over a dozen years now. Um, the pilots are up in the control vans. They've done their pre-dive checks, and they're ready to put the vehicle in the water. Mark has organized a team of people on the back deck with their safety gear, life vests, and hard hats, and a few of them get to wear... Um, headphones so they can hear what's happening up in the control van and talk to the bridge of the ship as well. Um, so what Mark's doing, he's getting everything ready back there. The first step in a launch will be to put Hercules in the water. We hook up the crane to Hercules and you can see there was a uh, pyramid shaped aluminum structure on top of Hercules that we call a sway limiter. That keeps Hercules from rolling and pitching too much in a heavy sea state. Now this particular launch was in Yalakovac Harbor and it's about as calm and placid as you could ever imagine it to be. Um, but believe me, it can get quite a bit rougher and that sway limiter is, is a real help. The other thing you see in this picture, there's a person dedicated to holding what's called a tagline. The tagline is attached to the back of Hercules in a, in a bale shaped uh, piece and there it is, you can see the tagline and that helps to control Hercules' sway as well, especially as the crane lowers the vehicle down into the water. And what's the, the cone-shaped thing here that comes out in this yellow line? Uh, the yellow line is the tether. That's what connects Hercules to, the, to Argus and therefore back to the ship. And the cone piece is what we call a bending strain relief. It's really just something to keep the tether from getting damaged as Hercules swims around at the end of the tether. Um, so Herc is connected to Argus. And Argus then is connected to the ship. Tell us how that works. So Argus has a steel cable attached to it. There's 4,300 meters of cable attaching Argus to the ship. And there's approximately 30 meters or 32 or so meters of tether, neutrally buoyant tether between Argus and Hercules. So what's happening right here, the crane operator is lowering Herc down into the water. The pilots have done their last minute checkouts. They've tested the thrusters. They've turned some lights on. They've turned their main heading reference, a compass, on and let that stabilize, and they're ready to put Hercules down into the water and release a release mechanism to keep, to make Hercules completely free of the crane. And uh, that's what you see here, a beautiful view, an overview taken from a mountaintop in Yalakovac Harbor, looking down on the ship. And how do they make sure that Herc doesn't bump into the ship while they're, while they're launching him? There's a couple things. One thing, the crane operator is uh, keeping Hercules out at a distance while the vehicle's doing its first power on and checkouts. The other thing is, as soon as the vehicle's clear of the crane, the pilots are watching all of the deck cameras, the cameras looking back on the fantail, and they drive Hercules immediately astern as soon as they're free. And they're connected to the ship, as we said, with this yellow tether. That connects from back to back, from rear end to rear end, from Hercules to Argus. And uh, Hercules will drive astern, drive back toward that, behind the ship, until that tether becomes taut. And one it is, once it is tight, once, once they have tail to tail, Herc to Argus, then it's time to transition the deck crew, Mark DeRoche is back there, getting the crane put away and getting ready to launch Argus at this point. So how does the launch of Argus work? Well, the first thing we do, we disconnect aircraft straps or tie-down straps on the fantail. And then, just like Hercules had taglines, Argus also has a couple of taglines. There's, there's two taglines. One person is in charge of each one to keep Argus from swinging around too much. So we lift the vehicle off the deck with that cable, that 4,300 meter long cable. And then the A-frame, this black structure you see, is hydraulically driven out. 
to put Argus over the side of the ship. And so that takes a couple of minutes as, as Mark guides and directs choreographers. He's, he's quite the dance director back there. He's keeping everything under control, telling folks what they need to do, talking to the pilots at the same time over the intercom system, and also talking to the bridge in case the ship needs to change direction, change heading, move ahead a little bit. Normally, we have the ship moving forward at about one half of a knot, which if you're walking along is about as slow as you can imagine walking, but it helps us as pilots to keep the vehicle stretched out tail to tail with that tether taut and not get in trouble. And how long does the whole launch sequence take? The launch sequence start to finish, once we actually lift Hercules off the deck and put it over the side, it takes 15 to 25 minutes or so. Once the vehicles are in the water and uh, starting to descend, we usually stop at 50 meters and uh, turn on uh, some acoustic sensors, some tracking sensors, make sure everything's okay. And then from there, the deck crew puts away their safety gear and goes, they go get their dinner or whatever else is waiting for them at that point. That sounds great. Well, Todd, thank you so much for taking the time to join us here. You're welcome. All right, for those of you following at home, be sure to follow on Facebook and Twitter, and make sure also to join the expedition live right here at nautiluslive.org.